So good morning everyone. My name is Ikria Edijenfi, a doctoral student from Auburn University. And today my presentation is on climate smart agriculture, the perception of smallholder cocoa farmers in Ghana. So a brief introduction. We all are aware that our planet climate is changing and it's caused by the increase of greenhouse gases and the effects of climate change can be seen in the increasing in temperatures, rising in sea levels, and also change in precipitation and the recent occurrence of weather events. So climate change poses a greater effect on the agricultural industry as well as food security and um, causes um, some of the hunger issues that we face in the world today. So the World Bank estimated about 690 million people in the world are facing hunger today. And in Ghana, cocoa industry is one of the major um, crop industry in the country that promotes economic development. And it's also the second largest, um, Ghana is also the second largest international cocoa producing nation in the world. So the impacts of climate change will affect rural development, will affect production yields and food security as well. And um, quite, um, cocoa production is also managed by smallholder cocoa farmers in Ghana. And they are the mostly hit by climate change because they depend on rain-fed agriculture and also um, lack adaptive capacity to climate change. So um, the FAO in bid to promote sustainable agricultural goals and also help farmers adapt to climate change, they came up with the term climate smart agriculture. And climate smart agriculture is not a set of new practices at the farm level. It is an, an, an innovative approach to help um, agricultural stakeholders adapt to the changing climate. And climate change also simultaneously aim to achieve three um, objectives. The first one is to sustainably increase agricultural productivity to help agricultural communities adapt to the climate change and also to reduce or improve greenhouse gases where possible. And also, Climate Smart is um, context and specific and is based on the local um, knowledge of practices in the community. So, Climate Smart Agriculture Adaptation also depends on the access of knowledge and technology and also the affordability of strategies as well. There are certain barriers that um, prevent these small farmers from adapting to climate smart agriculture. And some of the um, barriers include inadequate financial resources, lack of extension systems, lack of credit facilities, and lack of technical information. So the purpose of this study is to explore um, smallholder perception on climate change, climate smart agriculture, and their likelihood to adapt um, to climate smart practices, and also to look at the barriers that are prevent them from adopting to these climate smart practices. So these are the various research questions that guide my work. So I wanted to see that how do small cocoa farmers perceive climate change? And also how do they perceive climate smart agriculture? We also wanted to look at how do they perceive the likelihood to adopt to these climate smart practices and also the barriers that prevent them from adopting to climate smart agriculture. I also looked at the demographic characteristics of the global cocoa farm. So my method section is, um, my study area was in Burim in the eastern region of Ghana, and questionnaires were administered in person. We used the, um, the five-point Likert scale during, um, for my questionnaire, and then random sampling was used to target our household samples. Data was analyzed using SBSS, and the research was approved by the Ghana Health, Cocoa, and Extension Division, as well as the IRB of Auburn University. So my results, my first research question was, I wanted to see smallholder, how the smallholder cocoa farmers perceive climate, climate change. So um, most of them, most of my participants strongly agreed that climate change had a, a negative impact on cocoa production, indicating that the, it affects sibling mortality and pest and disease increase during climate change. I also, the second one, I wanted to see how small the cocoa farmers perceive climate smart agriculture. 
like the previous one, most of the participants are strongly agree that climate smart agricultural practices have a positive impact, will have a positive impact on their cocoa production and indicated that they have the knowledge to adopt to climate smart um, practices. And they are also agree that farm income will increase as a result of practicing climate smart agriculture. So my third um, research question was, I wanted to see how farmers perceive the likelihood to adopt these climate smart practices. And majority of them said that they somewhat agree or would like to adopt to these climate smart uh, practices. So most of them were likely to adopt to these practices and indicated that they would want to intercrop cocoa production with timber trees as well as intercrop with food crop um, production as well. So finally, I wanted to see the barriers that prevent smallholder farmers from adopting climate smart agriculture. And majority indicated the lack of finances and the lack of credit facilities as barriers that impeded them to adopt these climate smart practices. So my demographics include most of the most of my participants were between the ages of 30 and 44, had some senior high school education, where males, about 70% of them were males. And 80% have received some form of training on climate smart agriculture, and about 85% have received extension services. So in conclusion, um, most smallholder cocoa farmers in Ghana perceive um, climate change to have a negative impact on their cocoa farm, and they perceive climate smart agriculture to have a positive impact on their cocoa farm, and they were likely to adopt to these climate smart agriculture practices. And they indicated that finances and credit facilities were barriers to them adopting to these climate smart agriculture. So adoption of, so why is this research important? So adoption of climate smart is affected by, um, influ is influenced by the knowledge of climate smart, climate change, and the barriers. So look at, doing this research is going to help policymakers to really shape policies and help these smallholder farmers to adapt to these climate smart practices. And climate smart is context specific. So knowing the kind of information at the local level will also scale up climate smart adoption practices. So yeah. So my dissertation was the sample size. So this was a preliminary study towards my dissertation. So the sample size was a bit, was a bit small, so it, it didn't give a true representation of my research. So I'm seeking to ex collect data and expand this research towards my dissertation. And also, um, since the recruitment or the sample size was done in Ghana, and like I said previously, climate smart is context specific. So we, I cannot use this data to generalize to different ge geographic locations. However, developing climate smart practices involves localizing these information to be able to scale up the success of climate smart agriculture. So thank you, and I want to acknowledge my advisors, um, Dr. J Jason McKibben, Dr. Christopher Clemens, and Dr. James Linda for the support in this research. Thank you so much. All right, well don't go anywhere. I'm gonna step over here. Do you hear that buzzing? Yeah. I don't know, can you pull the laptop a little bit away? Yeah, okay. Oh, wow. Sorry about that. That's all right, that's all right. Well, she needed to be able to reach it to click through. Yeah. So, we, um, so what a great study of actually like being there, asking the people that we're trying, that the extension agents are working to, to help. I had a, a couple questions, and I'm not I'm not going to ask them all right now. But I was just curious, um, how experienced were these farmers? How many years do you do you think they have been farming? And do you, did you get a sense that they were already using some of these climate smart practices? Thank you so much, Courtney, for the question. So most of them, most of the farmers that we interviewed were had farmed for years, ten years and above. And most of them were not using these climate smart practices. It's actually like a new term being introduced to the community. So most of them were willing to adapt, but then they had financial challenges to do so. That's why policy is very important to aid them in terms of support credit, you know, support loan facilities to be able to help these farmers 
adapt to these climate smart changes as well. Uh, back there since I skipped you last time. <laughs> um, I so appreciate your identification of the importance of policy making because my work also focuses at the at policy level. And I'm curious, as you think about your dissertation, have you, are you going to be working with any of the farmers to identify what types of policies would be supportive? Um, because there are many different ways that one could incentivize or offer credit. And so I just wonder, I'm sure your methodology is already set, so, but I just wonder if that's part of it um, or if that's something that may build upon this current work. So thank you so much. So that's not part of it, but it, it will be interesting to look into that to add up to my dissertation. So I'll take that as a good... Um, you always have a career. After right? <laughs> There's so much to be done. Thank you so much. Yes. Uh, you were saying that climate sport agriculture like to is a newer term, but also it was interesting to see how many farmers were already familiar with the term based off that uh, light group scale. So I was wondering if you have any understanding of where that knowledge has been gained. Is it from an like, NGO's extension or now? So yes, so they've had, um, so FAO had introduced a group of people to go there to do like training on Climate Smart. So they already have the knowledge of Climate Smart Agriculture. But practicing it is where the issue is. So we're trying to find ways of getting them into practicing this Climate Smart Agriculture practices. Here and then I'll go back again. Uh, so I started my day by reading a new report from one of the intergovernmental groups about climate change that says we have a few years before the goal of 1.5 Celsius slips away from us. And they identified policy as a major constraint, but they did not talk about smallholder farmers. So I'm curious what you think, because you mentioned financing as a huge barrier. How do we get that discussion out there? So I was reading one of the articles and one of them mentioned that to get, um, we can get the, the government, so from Ghana, we can get the government to kind of raise alternative financial sources for these farmers. So for, for example, we can get them to market their goods in another way that will raise like extra funds for them to be able to adapt to these climate smart changes. So it's, it's a talk in Ghana, but they haven't really implemented that um, policy yet. So. Yeah, thank you. I really appreciate your talk. And I think um, if you really think about all the talks today, we're all looking at a very complex issue, a very complex system, right? And I wanted to raise the question to you. Just, if you're thinking about what I might argue is really a structural problem, that climate change and smallholder farmer adaptation or practices is, is complex because if we're placing the onus on farmers to change X, Y, and Z, Really, are we not asking perhaps larger systems, economic systems, cultural systems to really realize that they have a place, a larger place, to unpack why, is, why are these issues taking place to begin with? And so I, my question to you is, are you considering in your research possibilities for interviewing or doing more extensive um, dialogue with not just, I mean, policymakers is, is, is an important space. It's, it's people across the food system, yeah. across the supply chain, across the markets, and really to understand that the, the problem shouldn't lie with the farmer to have to solve the problem, right? And so where are we going to go with that conversation? So thank you for that question. So one of my um, committee members proposed that suggestion that I should include interview other stakeholders along the supply chain to get their views on what Climate Smart is about. So I'm going to include that in my dissertation. Um, in my dissertation to be able to get their views on what policies, I guess, or how they're going to help these um, smallholder farmers along the supply chain to adopt to these climate smart practices. Excellent. I look forward to that. <laughs> Thank you. We have time for one more. So I, I, I was curious if you could talk a little bit about the instrument development, because you had very specific items yes. that apply just to yes. these farmers. So, so, um, so for the instrument, we had um, various categories. So the first one was asking them about um, perception on climate, climate change. So some of the questions included um, climate change has a negative impact on cocoa production, seedling mortality, and pest and um, disease have increased. So some of, those were some of the questions. And then there were a lack of scale of strongly agree to strongly disagree. 
And then we had another op um, portion that um, we asked about their likelihood to ad adopt these practices. So it was likely to un unlikely. So those were like some of the questions, and then we asked some demographics and some um, questions on training and um, land use and information on sources. I couldn't put all of them here because it was going to be so long, but these were the summary of our question here. All right, so let's uh, thank her again for a wonderful presentation. All right, well, I want to thank you all for coming to this session. What a great group of presentations, and I hope that you'll continue those conversations as we go throughout the rest of the conference. Thank you.